from the top down. That prevents the seas from turning into blocks of ice and allows life to continue. The viscosity of water and its other physical and chemical properties are all at the ideal levels for supporting life. These delicate balances, of which we have seen a few examples, have led scientists to one important conclusion. There is an anthropic principle in the universe, as they describe it. In other words, every detail in the universe has been designed to make human life possible. The interesting thing here is that most of the scientists who reveal that truth were actually materialists who had no great wish to reach such a conclusion. In his book, The Symbiotic Universe, the American astronomer George Greenstein admits the fact in these words. As we survey all the evidence, the thought insistently arises that some supernatural agency must be involved. Is it possible that suddenly, without intending to, we have stumbled upon scientific proof of the existence of a supreme being? In his 1998 book, Nature's Destiny, How the Laws of Biology Reveal Purpose in the Universe, the well-known molecular biologist Michael Denton makes the following comment. The new picture that has emerged in 20th century astronomy presents a dramatic challenge to the presumption which has been prevalent within scientific circles during most of the past four centuries that life is a peripheral and purely contingent phenomenon in the cosmic scheme. In short, the concept of the accidental universe, perhaps the fundamental basis of atheism, has been totally collapsed. The deceptive nature of the concept was revealed in the Quran some 1,400 years ago. We did not create heaven and earth and everything between them to no purpose. That is the opinion of those who disbelieve. The most important foundation of atheism as it reached its peak in the 19th century was Darwin's theory of evolution. Darwin proposed that the origin of man and all other living things could be explained by unconscious natural mechanisms. In that way, he offered a false explanation for the origins of life for which atheists had been unable to account for hundreds of years. In fact, the atheists of the time rushed to embrace Darwin's theory. Beginning with Marx and Engels, 19th century atheist thinkers described the theory as lying at the heart of their philosophies. However, the major support of atheism itself collapsed with the scientific discoveries of the 20th century. The evidence put forward by different branches of science, such as paleontology, biochemistry, anatomy, and genetics, undermine the theory of evolution from a number of directions. Darwin had maintained that all living species were descended from a common ancestor and had grown apart from one another in a series of small progressive changes.
He hoped that fossils would provide evidence for that claim. Yet all the fossil research throughout the 20th century presented a totally different picture. Not one transitional species that might prove Darwin's theory was found. For example, the phenomenon known as the Cambrian Explosion is by itself sufficient to destroy the theory of evolution. Almost all the basic categories in the animal world emerged all of a sudden in that early geological period. Living things from very different classes such as mollusks, vertebrates, arthropods, and echinoderms with their very different physical characteristics emerge with their exceedingly complicated organs and systems all at once. This fact that emerges from the fossil record demolishes the theory of evolution and is proof of creation instead. In putting his theory forward, Darwin based it on the idea that animal breeders produce different species of dog or horse. He then applied the changes observed in those creatures to the whole of nature and suggested that all living things might have descended from one common ancestor in this way. However, that claim was made in the light of the low level of the 19th century science, and discoveries made in the 20th century demolished it. Decades of observations of different animal or plant species reveal that variation within living things never went beyond specific genetic bounds. Genetic experiments, on the other hand, showed that the mutations that Darwinists regarded as an evolutionary mechanism could never add new genetic information to living things, but that, on the contrary, they always had harmful effects. The countless mutation experiments carried out on fruit flies only yielded deformed individuals. According to Darwin's theory, life on earth must have begun from inanimate matter. So how did the first living thing come about? Darwin failed to address that issue, contenting himself